Being able to reduce body volume and change the outline of a figure is one of Photoshop's sneakier tricks. To do this, well, there are a lot of different methods, but the method we'll look at here is using the liquify tool. Now what we're going to try and do is we're going to take this lovely looking model who's perfectly fine the way she is, but we're going to give her a little bit of a reduction on the buttocks and in the upper arms. Now the tool that we're going to be using to do this is called the liquify tool, which is a fun tool to use, but if not used correctly, can just make a mess. Okay, first of all, I'm going to take a copy of my before layer. This is my untreated version, so I'll just rename this one, corrected, and enter. Um, to make things go a little bit quicker, I am using an extremely high resolution image. Just to give you an idea how high resolution image it is, I'll just zoom in up here so you can get an idea. It's very, 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 very high quality. This makes the job a lot easier, so I would recommend for most of your jobs, particularly if you're doing beauty retouching, get the highest resolution image you possibly can to make this work. As you can see in my palette, it's 2,904 pixels by 4,368. It's big, and that's the way you want them to be. Now, because it's so big, things might start behaving very slowly, so I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit, and I'm going to isolate the area that's going to be corrected first. I'll just come out a little bit more, take my lasso tool, and I'll just draw a nice, big, wide, loose lasso around that area. This will help save a little bit of horsepower on your computer and make things go a tiny bit quicker if you're not going to correct everything all at once. Okay, we'll go to the filter menu and we activate liquify. And I now need to drag the camera over because the liquify screen is really very, very big. There's a lot to the liquify tool. I'll just drag this in as much as I can and I'll take you for a tour. Okay, now in the liquify area, it only shows the isolated area as a square. Red is masked. That means it's not going to be affected by what we are about to do. The tools that we'll be using for this exercise are the forward warp tool and the reconstruct tool. Think of the reconstruct tool as being like an undo brush. We might play around with this one called the Pucker Tool, which is very good for performing Photoshop liposuction. There's also hand tools and zoom tools. All of your shortcuts that you have outside in normal Photoshop, they all work in here, so you can save time as well. Now, I'm going to make the basic beginning of a reduction here, so what I need to do is to choose an appropriate brush. Now, for this sort of correction, it's best to go for a brush that's as big as you can get just about, something that's in sympathy with the curvature of the object that's going to be corrected. So I'll go to the brush size, drop down, and I'll just push it up, right up, I'm going very, very big. Maximum size you get on this is 600, and that's getting pretty close to what I want, go about 550, I think. Yep, yeah, that's big enough for me. The brush density, uh, think of brush density as being a little bit like softness and hardness for regular brushes. If you want a soft edge brush, you push it up to 100. If you want very hard edge, you pull it down to zero. I'm going to push it up to 100 because I think for what I'm about to do, a soft edge helps because I'm going to try and slow everything down a little bit. Now, so you can see how this works. I'll just give this a click and a push, and it pushes in and it's like liquid hence the name liquify tool but it can go ugly very quickly so I'll just go control Z for you Mac people that of course is Apple or command Z and I'm gonna make this happen a little bit more slowly and this is controlled by the brush pressure if I bring the brush pressure down to about 20 25 percent somewhere around there would be good and I do exactly the same thing again yep things happen much more slowly. Now it's more like rubber rather than like liquid. This is good because it means we can do things in a little bit more of a controlled pace. Okay, now to start making the changes, move your brush so that the edge of the brush overlaps the area that's about to be reshaped. Click and gently tap in, then release. This is the best way to work. Rather than just going push and shove, that tends to give you bad results. It's best just to gently push in a little bit, release, 
move on to the next bit, push in, release, overlap, push in, release, overlap, push in, release, etc, etc, etc. Yes, it's not exciting to watch, but the results that you're going to get are going to be very, very good because you will keep pretty much the original shape, if that's what you're going for, or and if you are doing a complete reshape, you can at least do it very gradually and evaluate how successfully this is all happening. Okay, now one of the things that's a bit tricky with liquify tool is seeing how much you've done and when you should stop. Now I'll just drag the camera down here so you can see a little option. Very, very useful. It's this thing down here called Show Backdrop. Now there's a Show Backdrop and an Opacity slider. And if I just drag the Opacity up, hey, look at that. It shows you the original area as it was and as it is now. If you sit it somewhere around about 49-50%, you can evaluate how much you've got left to do. So I'll just continue gently overlapping and nudging in, overlapping and nudging in, overlapping, nudging in. Now I'm doing this quite quickly now. Normally I would actually go a little bit slower than this because if you want professional results, you need to take some time to make sure that you don't rush and get some odd shapes. But so long as your brush density is down pretty low, you'll find that it's going to go fairly well. Now anything that goes badly, very, very badly, just nudge that in there. Yeah, it's not too bad. And I just might turn off my backdrop completely. Now see how it's a, it's a little bit dimply, a little dimpled effect. If it doesn't go well, you can take your reconstruct tool, and I might just lower the brush size a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a lot. I might lower it a lot actually. So there we go. And I'll just drop it in here. Just reconstruct slowly. Just rebuild it. If you only just make single clicks it will reconstruct, it will rebuild, and that way you can smooth out any of those dimpled edges. So it's like an undo brush, but it's an undo brush with brains. It undoes gently and slowly. That's why it also has the same brush pressure and brush rate sort of effects on it. This way you can control it. Okay, that's nowhere near as good as it should be, but I'm in a hurry to show you the effects, so I'll say that's good enough for now. Let's say OK. I'll just drag the camera up so you can see the confirmation box. Say OK. And we get a message that the liquify is being run. And drag back to Photoshop. And we can now do a before and after. There's before and there is after the reduction. So it's pretty impressive. At any time you can undo it, go back and make further corrections. But of course this is a destructive tool so make sure you're working on a copy of the original layer. You don't want to wipe out the original image. Alright, now we have another correction that we need to do and that is going to be right here on the arms. We're going to squeeze these arms in and shave in the edges of the arm so it's a little bit tighter. Now this is a different sort of job because it's surrounded not by white which is the easy way of doing things, but it's surrounded by the actual figure. So this is going to be a little bit different in how we go about it. So I've marked a loose selection around the area to be corrected. I'm on the corrected layer, and we go to Filter, Liquify once again, drag the camera over so you can see what we're doing. There we go. And red for our mast area, so they're protected. Now again, we go back to our palette and we can use the forward warp tool but I'll just show you another tool that might be suitable for this job. It's this one here, it's called Pucker. I sometimes call this the liposuction tool because it's very good for sucking in objects. If you click on something and hold down it just sucks in from the edges and from the sides of its brush shape. I'll just restore all. Another way of getting back everything that's been done. But uh, to make this work effectively, you again need big brush size. Something that's about the size of the arm, in fact. Maybe even a little bit bigger. Low brush pressure. Brush rate. Hmm, might just lower that a little bit too. Pull it down to about 20%. I'm trying to slow things down here, basically. All right, now to use it effectively. Uh, it's critical where you place it as to how it's going to behave. If you have the crosshair very close to this, for example, nothing much seems to happen. 
but if you pull it in here it starts to pull it in a little bit faster so less happens exactly at the middle but the very edges of the tool things seem to happen a little bit more quickly I'll just restore everything so I'll just move it out here to the edge and single clicks is how I do this single simple clicks now again it doesn't look like terribly much is happening whoops that one really jumped a little bit so I'll just undo that with a control Z try that one again because I moved in a bit too close to the center there so take it away gently 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 and come on to the other side and do the same again gently tugging in and sucking in the edges of that arm now I've got to say while I'm doing this I don't think there's anything wrong with the figure on this model at all she doesn't need any sort of Photoshop work for uh, the shape of her figure so I'm not making any value judgments here as to whether it needs to be done or not but uh, this is the technique that is used for slimming down those figures no matter what you or I or anyone else may think of the subject all right let's take a look at the backdrop to see how that now looks I'll just go to opacity and let's see oh yes very important if we're going to do this got to turn on show backdrop and we'll see before and after yeah that's a quite a significant reduction that's gone down a lot now any little loose stray bits that you might want to do you can of course switch back to the forward warp tool and you can then make just single little adjustments just by nudging it in uh, you might want to remove move the brush size down quite significantly before you do this this is good for just making small detail alterations again just very gentle and you might want to use the zoom tool get in as close as you possibly can so you can really evaluate if that's working or not and then make your adjustments at a very low level as I said if you want to get good results you do need to take your time and be willing to show a bit of patience in getting this to work okay just zoom out let's have a look at the opacity on that one. Oh yeah I think that's enough really one little thing that you might consider doing particularly here where you can see the fabric around the bra and bra cup have also been uh, warped by this tool you might want to consider restoring some of that back using a restore brush but be careful about that one it's a good idea if you have pushed in the pixels that it's a nice even spread you don't want to introduce a thing called pixel smearing which can be very very nasty and I'll show you what that looks like if you start restoring here you can see it's returning it and oh dear see that effect you get there that's a pixel smear effect and it's not fabulous so you've got to be careful you do need to stay away from the very edge of where you've made your correction otherwise you run the risk of bringing everything back to the way it was hmm should really have left that alone but anyway we'll live with that for the time being as well so now you know let's say okay and I'll just deselect and bring my camera back over here so let's take a look here is our before and there is our after it's a very powerful pair of tools use them gently use them with care and you'll get some unbelievable results get to it